The newest Inazuma update has brought some strong additions to the game, and these are the five characters that are now better than ever. It's no secret that Xiangling is considered to be one of the best, if not most popular, support damage dealers in the entire game, and it's all thanks to the fact she comes as a free reward after clearing one of the floors on the Spiral Abyss, and with a featured appearance on three limited banners, and even the availability to get more of her constellations off the Paimon's bargain shop, well, to put it simply, there's no way you could ignore this character when it comes to the biggest changes in 2.0. So, to start it off, one of the most common ways everyone was building, or at least what most of the guides suggested was the 4 Crimson Witch set, which more or less worked as her best in slot choice of equipment, but the biggest challenge our chef was facing was the massive 80 energy cost her burst had, and you had to combat this with either a battery teammate, which meant providing a good amount of elemental particles, or building some energy recharge from the substats or even a weapon. But now that Emblem of Severed Fate artifact set has come out, the set bonuses it provides not only address the energy issue Shangling has with her burst, but the 4 piece bonus also doubles down on increasing the damage of her most valuable talent. And from the testing that was done, it's also recommended to obtain Sands with Energy Recharge, especially if you're going to be running her as the sole pyro damage dealer in the team, because not only will you have an easier time generating energy with her, but to 25% it also gets converted to extra burst damage, so you're basically hitting two birds with one stone. You charge up the burst faster, and you're also hitting for more damage with it. But keep in mind that Crimson Witch is still the preferred set to go after, if you heavily rely on dealing vaporized damage together with Xing Chi or other hydro support, but other than that, this set in a vacuum without considering what subsets you get is a direct upgrade from Crimson Witch. And let's not forget that there aren't that many characters who can use Crimson Witch, while the newest emblem of Severed Fate has a wide variety of uses, especially considering that awesome two set bonuses that you can move around so easily. So if you still haven't built Shangling or are considering to do it, the newest emblem of Severed Fate artifact set is an amazing opportunity to make her into one scary damage dealer thanks to the Inazuma 2.0 update. Continuing with the praise for the newest emblem set, Beto is also someone who heavily benefits from it, but not in the way you would think. First of all, the previous top choices was a mix between two sets of Thundering Fury, Noblesse Oblige, and sometimes even just Gladiators, or even in this case, the other new set that provide extra 18% attack, but the core problem with Beto was exactly the same as with Shangling. The burst cost was too high, and it required some workarounds, like using a secondary Electro teammate to funnel those Electro particles and quickly build up Beto burst. Now, the thing about this new artifact set for Beto is that damage-wise, the difference isn't that big when comparing to previously mentioned popular sets she uses. However, the true power comes from the two-set bonus of Emblem of Severed Fate, which no longer forces you to chase around substats that have energy recharge, and by just getting 20% straight off the bat, you can settle with artifact substats that don't have energy recharge, and focus on min-maxing the usual critical rate and damage. Also, keep in mind that while the force set gives a boost to her burst, it's not recommended to fully commit to an energy recharge build and just simply use her as the usual sub damage dealer focusing on attack, critical rate and damage while enjoying the benefits of the four set of Emblem of Severed Fate. So long story short, Beto's problematic burst cost now has a great workaround thanks to 2.0's update's newest artifact set, but it's important to note that damage wise, if you already have farmed up very decent or even strong artifacts for her, then you should probably stick with what you already have, but since she's going to be widely available to everyone, especially especially newer players, thanks to the major event that's happening right now, going for this set basically is the best bang for your resin, especially considering there are many characters that can benefit from it in varying degrees, but for Beto, this is basically the best she can get in terms of set bonuses, so it only makes her stronger after this newest update, at least when speaking in terms of gearing up more easily and effectively. It's rarely ever worth discussing a new weapon when it comes out because it's usually either custom made for one or few characters and hidden behind the gacha system, or as we saw in the past, some weapons like the ones from Dragon Spine Update weren't the most amazing additions to the game. But that's not the case for the newest craftable in Azuma Sword, the Yamanoma Kageyuchi. The amount of value it brings is pretty insane, especially considering the passives on craftable weapons haven't been known to be as drastic outliers aside from Crescent Pike. Now, the way it works is pretty simple. Anytime you 
use an elemental skill, you get a succession seed, which can stack up to 3 times in total, and after you use the burst, you gain back 6 energy per seed, or 18 at maximum, but because of refinement, you can scale this all the way to 36 energy, which is basically almost a full refund for characters with a burst cost of 40. Speaking of which, since the video is about the characters that got the best improvements in this 2.0 update, the sword itself is actually pretty good for the majority of them, aside from Xing Cho, who has a very long cooldown and won't really benefit from the sword, but from some observations made when playtesting this weapon, it's clear that Ayaka, Jin and Kaya are the ones that benefit the most from it, especially someone like Jin and Kaya, because of their low elemental skill cooldown, you can basically build up the seeds quickly enough to actually get to a count of 3, but no matter how you look at it, there's also the substat which probably would've made the weapon even more insane if it had critical rate or damage, but even just by having an attack percentage is already good enough, because you can compensate for some of the damage multipliers on talents, and it just wraps up the performance in a nice and an affordable way. So while this video is cheating a little bit and giving the spotlight to more than 5 characters, it's just hard to ignore such a great weapon, and some of the characters like Ayaka, Jean and Kaya getting awesome benefits from it, just keep in mind this is still a free to play weapon, and any 5 star will probably beat it in terms of damage output, but it's nevertheless important to acknowledge this weapon benefits a lot of characters who have otherwise could be contesting a weapon someone else is using in your team. It's a well-known fact by this point that Xing Cho is the building block behind many team builds, and for someone who is considered such a critical teammate, finding ways to maximize his performance without relying on things like the gacha system is probably an important thing every free-to-play player wants to know about. This of course refers to the sacrificial sword that's been recommended to death by everyone out there, and for a good reason too. The book nerd suffers not only from a massive 80 energy cost his burst has, but also the elemental skill itself has an unforgiving 21 second cooldown, so everyone and their mother out there is using sacrificial sword to combat these nauseating setbacks. And while this thinking is the most popular, there's also been recommendations to use him with a different energy recharge sword, like Favonius or Festering Desire, and then building up a little more energy recharge from the substats on your artifacts to reach somewhere around 160 to 1. 180 energy recharge and solve the issue with keeping the burst active when it's off cooldown. Well, going back once again to the emblem of Severed Fate, both of the bonuses actually work like wonders on Xing Cho, and it's all thanks to that extra 20% energy recharge, not to mention his hydro blades from the burst also hit for more damage, and the actual addition is very noticeable per each hit, so you know you're dealing with an awesome improvement. But in reality, the biggest benefit this set provides is that he doesn't need to depend on Sacrificial Sword anymore, and you can let it to someone else instead, not to mention if you have a Favonius sword equipped, the neutral elemental particles from the passive will be more beneficial for the whole team. Now, if you have already farmed up 2 piece Noblesse and Hydro sets with great substats and have a sacrificial sword, then obtaining the new set won't guarantee a big increase in damage, but if you want to remove the sword and give it to someone else, then getting the newest emblem of Severed Fate is going to help you out with that. You've probably heard enough about bursts and their energy costs, but there's one character that got better not for themselves, but for their teammates instead. This of course is the newest Electro Traveler form that showers everyone with free energy recharge, as well as actual energy points you can gain from their elemental skill, not to mention there's a nice little burst of their own that's a mix between Beidos and Xing Chos, which isn't the most amazing thing out there, but it can help pull off some neat things, like triggering overloads with pyro attacks, and it's always the Traveler who causes them so you can build up some elemental mastery and get those big damage numbers on reactions going. Still, if there's one thing the Traveler can help with, then it would be the energy issues a lot of characters are facing. So while the newest emblem of Severed Fate is like a godsend in this 2.0 update and makes the characters stronger than ever without needing to rely on older sets, it's still going to take some time to farm up this new set and maybe not everyone is up for the task. So as a workaround solution, the new Electro Traveler can do this for your team and act as a great battery. Either way, this is a free character and a solution to quite a few problems. So if anyone's got the best of 2.0 update, then it would be the Traveler. Before you leave this video, keep in mind the improvements shown here were mostly done in a vacuum without considering the substats, so what this basically means is that if you already have obtained very decent or strong artifact sets with great substats, there's really no need to farm up the new Emblem Force set, but keep in mind the biggest selling point owning this new artifact set is the fact it's interchangeable between quite a few characters, so as an example, let's say Shanglin currently has a 4-piece set of Crimson Witch, you couldn't really transfer any of the pieces to someone like Beto 
or Xingqiu. Not to mention the fact you had to farm up this set from a domain that's only relevant to a few characters, while on the other hand, with the Emblem of Severed Fate, you could move around the pieces or even the entire four-set bonus to different characters, because a lot of them now consider this set to be nearly best in slot, so basically, not only is there a resin efficiency when it comes to farming the domain, but also the option to have it on plenty of characters that can capitalize on the set bonuses, leaving this as an extremely desirable artifact set for newer players who got to endgame and those who still haven't built the mentioned characters. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. You can help show support for this channel by subscribing to it and gently pressing the like button, which helps out immensely for future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.